Welcome to Talk the Dog, the show where we find a bone to pick and a take to give. These are not hot takes. These is dog takes. Can I talk that dog? Shut up and grab some tape. 15, ladies and gentlemen. That's the number of football games every football team in America hopes, prays, and wishes for at the beginning of every season. For Georgia fans, that's the dream of playing 12 regular season games, a conference championship game, and two college football playoff games. That's been your reality for the last two or three years. That's been your reality to be able to play 15 games. But we don't get to relish in the glory of January without showing up and showing out, okay, in early September. That's not how it works. That's right. We are still in the era of college football where perfection, or at least the pursuit of it, right, is still a prerequisite in a meaningful postseason play. In order to make the postseason, hey, we have got to show up every single weekend. We've got to be in the pursuit or at least pretending to be in the pursuit of perfection week in and week out. So as we get set to kick off the 2023 season here on this network, I wanted to issue a challenge to you, right? The Georgia football fan here on this hour, in this local hour, that's become accustomed to Saturdays in December and Mondays in January. That's become your normal. Don't just assume that's going to be it. Don't become complacent. Don't take a single snap this season for granted, right? Show up and cheer for the Georgia Bulldogs like you do against UT Martin, like you know you'll need to against Ohio State. We talk about it on this network all the time. Beat Florida like you need to beat Ohio State. Beat Kentucky like you need to beat Ohio State. Show up for UT Martin on Saturday like you'll show up for uh, Ohio State in the in December, right? Do the same thing and set that standard Saturday, okay? That's my challenge to you. In all seriousness, um, for Georgia football fans this year, if you want your football team to show up and play to the caliber and to the, uh, you know, the level that they are capable of, then you better start making, uh, making sure there's no necessarily mid environments, right? Don't, don't, don't go into that stadium, you know, kind of down because it's a, it's, a, it's a nooner against a, a lesser than opponent. Because if you have that mentality, if the environment has that in, in mentality, trust me, the players can 100% feel that. Welcome into tonight's show. We got a loaded one for you. I know there is football on right now. Trust me, I am the football guy. All right, we get it. Um, but there's also a level of tolerance that I have for game day announcements. You know, PA guys, play-by-play guys. Um, a friend of the show, Aaron Murray, is calling a game right now. So if you wanted to listen to him, I understand. But hey, put us in the corner. Put us on your phone. Put the game on the TV. All right? Have that going on. Listen to us. We're going to talk some ball, and y'all can watch some ball. All right? We can be an auditorial product for you guys today, as opposed to being a visual one, or we can be a little bit of both. Hope you have an enjoyment, or I hope you've had a great week. We've had a great week of show here and had a great week of programming here. I hope you've enjoyed it. Hit that like button while you're here. Uh, hit that subscribe button as well. We've got bold predictions for Saturday's matchup for you guys today. We've got a uh, give them three. Segment that is inspired by one of our listeners, Dalton Lockridge, on Twitter. Hit me up with one that I really, really like, and we're going to give you that today. Uh, We're going to help our boy Kirby with a life dilemma, uh, and we're going to talk about what Sunday's headlines are going to be today, and we will give you our final score predictions for Saturday's football game at some point during tonight's broadcast. Boys, how are we doing today, man? No foosing going on in here today. There's no, no fake juice going on in here today. Freaking ain't, ready. Ain't no foos allowed up in this joint. You understand? Hey, I, I don't know how many people watched our mic'd up episode. I know how many people, right? We, we have the, the data. The first episode's got over 50,000 views that we put out on Buford just about 15 days ago. Um, and the second episode's got about, I would say, five or 6,000 views. Um, but man, we, we, we're going we're gonna to announce where we're going this weekend, and it's not necessarily a Georgia-centric uh, selection for us. It's more of if you love highly competitive and highly uh, enthusiastic Georgia high school football, you're going to love the product we give you on Monday after going to this game tomorrow night. I truly believe that. So excited to be bringing that to you guys today. Um, I have last night's show notes in front of me. I don't even have tonight's show notes on accident. Uh, printed the wrong ones. But no, we, we, we do have a great show. 
Uh, are you guys excited or what for, for the first week of college football? I can't keep you contained. You've been bouncing off the walls like a little freaking teenager. Dude, I'm so happy. You can ask Jay. Well, I barked at a lady driving down Millage today. It was yeah, so damn funny. You just barking at old lady? Well, she had yeah. a dog rolling around and I barked at it and she got mad at me. Did you dog, like, did you D-O-G dog bark? No. Like, roof, roof, or no, did no, you? No. That. You gave her one of those? Hell yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's, I, I've never, it's the one thing I never understood. Why, as a as a grown adult, we would bark? But you know what? I'm not. It's not my thing, and I'm not judgmental. I'm not going to go about any judgmental uh, aspects of it. It's something that I wish I had. I talked about it on this network before. I wish I was fanatical about my about something. I wish I was just belligerently stupid and passionate about something other than my wife, my kids, and my job. I wish there was something outside of that. But I just I don't have, and, and, and I don't have time. It's not a good enough excuse because <clears throat> I can make time. But I don't have it. I don't have nothing that makes me like an idiot. I don't That's have nothing sad. that makes me want to roll down the window and bark at a, a stranger. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's sad, honestly. I feel bad for you. Oh, I thought you were saying it's sad that you were barking at a stranger. No, yeah. no, I, that shit was hilarious. I'd do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Got a great show for you guys tonight. Make sure you're hitting that thumbs up button. Um, love a good Thursday show. Also, love our friends at Prize Picks. Uh, 100% deposit match today over on Prize Picks using promo code Brooks. Um, our boy Jay Will's got a lock for us. Uh, we have one going on right now with uh, our, our guy uh, uh, Kirby over there. He's got Ricky Persaw tonight. He's got the combination of backs, um, and he's got John Rice Plum Plumley, who looks like he's he's, a, he's about to score a third. So I'm yeah, John Rice Plumley got three tutties in the first uh, quarter, so that one's about gassed. But Jay Will, hey, looks like that one's sliding into the last column. What can we do tonight to give our friends and family a sweet dub heading into the weekend? All right. Well, first one, if you haven't locked it in, it's too late because this game is about to be underway. But Trevor Etienne <laughs> just kicked off more rushing yards than 48 and a half. I think that's an easy pick, especially based that's on when what you we wave said. me down. You're like, hey, bro, we got to lock it in. <laughs> my bad. My you're bad. good. You're good. The other three, you still can. I think you should jump in on these. Quinn Ewers, more than 235 and a half passing yards against Rice this weekend. Roma Dunze, more than 79 and a half receiving yards for Washington versus Boise State. And then also, I got um, Quinn Ewers' boy, Xavier Worthy, more than 63 and a half receiving yards as well. You know, big fan of the program, Roma Dunze. Yeah. Or at least we're a big fan on the program of Roma Dunze. Um, have been for quite some time. That dude's a baller, man. The whole Washington receiving yeah. core is going to be elite this year. But we're talking that dog here on this network right now today. Um, the people in this chat right now, y'all some OGs. Y'all locking it in. I know there's plenty of options to be going elsewhere. Uh, I don't expect Thursday shows to be hella, hella successful, but we're going to show up and do them anyways because that's our show schedule and it is what it is. Um, we got some bold predictions for you guys today uh, for Saturday's game. Now, the... I, it's UT Martin. It's not Oklahoma. It's not Clemson. It's not Oregon. I, I understand that you guys have kind of grown accustomed to this first game of the year being something to really talk about, right? To really show up for, to really get after it for. And we were kind of joking with the opening. It was kind of a goof, kind of a spoof, but it really wasn't. Like, try to show up. Try to be elite no matter what, because your football team's going to have to, right? And 19-, and 20-year-olds need you to have that juice inside that stadium. But uh, for these bold predictions, I don't think any of these – are outrageous, even though they are bold. I'll start with my number one uh, bold prediction. I think Carson Beck and this Georgia offense score on their first five opening drives. I think as soon as they get the ball, they walk that sucker down the field and they score like that. I mean, just like a breeze. And here's why. Carson Beck's itching to get after. He's been itching to play football for quite some time now in a starter's role. Um, but more importantly, our guy Mobo. That boy Mike Bobo been sitting at, uh, just, just cooking, just over there, just whipping up. You know what I mean? If you gave me a whole football season to deliver an hour's worth of a show content, by God, I better be just foot to on the pedal, just absolutely gassed down, just firing takes. It ought to be just nothing but a, a, an hour of flame throwing. That's what I expect to see from Mike Bobo on Saturday. Okay, I don't expect him to dump the kitchen sink. Okay, I don't expect him to unload every single weapon and every single, you know, little hidden trick that he's got in his bag for the season. But I do expect him to come out with a purpose as an offensive coordinator to score the football um, and score it quickly. So I think that's, a, that's an easy one for me for, from a standpoint of George is going to have success and move the football early and often in this football game. Um, I think Cash Jones is going to have Georgia's fan base wooing after Saturday. 
um, one of these running backs is going to get a majority of the, the load. It's a really thin room right now. There's no reason to have Dejon and Kendall out there getting a bunch of touches. There's about three backs, okay, they are going to be rotating. And Savon Clark, if you want to call it a fourth. But the Cash Jones, the Roger Robinsons, the, the Andrew Pauls, all right, one of those guys is going to have to eat on Saturday. I think it's going to be two of them. One of them is going to be Cash Jones, and the other one we'll tell you about right now. I think Roger Robinson debuts with 100 yards, okay? Ooh. That sounds crazy. It is an absolute flaming hot take. It is a bold prediction. It is as bold as we can get with a week one prediction against UT Martin. But I just laid it out for you. We, we talk about it all the time on this network. To start as a freshman, to play as a freshman, you got to have three things. Physically, you got to be able to play. You got to be ready to go. Not time, I got to put on weight, I got to lose weight, I got to get ready and shape. Uh uh. He is good to go. He is physically prepared to tote the load in college football. You have to have the ability, the opportunity to, right? You have to op- have the opportunity to play. That's certainly available to him. And the transition's got to be really easy for you, whether it be because you played high levels of competition in high school or whether it be because you play a position that doesn't really require a high tax load or burden from a uh, philosophical standpoint and learning the playbook standpoint. Check, 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 check. Like, we're just checking boxes for Roger Robinson to have a great freshman year. And we're really checking the boxes for him to get a bunch of run and an opportunity right now when older guys are banged up. Ladies and gentlemen, those are my three bold predictions for today. What say you guys? My first one, Savon Clark leads the team in rushing attempts. Not necessarily rushing yards, but attempts. I just think that... They'll give Roderick Robinson and all those guys a run in the first half, but I think you're a banged-up room. You're going to try and keep some guys healthy. So once you get that game underway, I think you start just handing the ball to a guy like Savon Clark and letting him eat. So I think he has the most attempts for Georgia on the ground. I think Georgia's defense forces two turnovers on Saturday. And then my last one, I'm predicting a special teams touchdown, whether it's a block punt, block, like uh, what? Was yeah, that one yeah. of yours? Did you start one of his? I guess so. I guess Man. I did. Sorry about that one. But yeah, Damn, special bro. teams touchdown, kick return, something like that. I like that. Um, speaking of touchdowns, the first play from yeah. scrimmage, Bryson Barnes threw a 70-yard touchdown. Uh, Utah up 7 nothing. Yeah, just, just that's – yikes. That's classic. So, yeah, I had Georgia scores a not, non-offensive touchdown there. The other two I had were Brock Bowers lines up at the running back position. Doesn't take, a, doesn't take a rush. I think it's just something Georgia wants to do to get that film out there, get teams to go, oh, shit, we got to really prepare for that special. Then number two, I have Carson Beck's. You said Georgia's first five possessions they score. Yeah. I'll one-up you on that. Carson Beck's first pass is a touchdown. Mm. little Matt Ryan-esque right there. Matt Ryan, Stetson Bennett, UAB. His first pass of his first start since he came back was a just straight go route to Jermaine Burton. So it could happen. I like it. Es possible. Es possible. (laughs) So that that was all three? Yeah, that was three. All right. Um. More importantly, we have football Saturday, which means we're going to have tape next weekend to watch. Mm. Um, so I already know some of the things right now, sitting here on Thursday evening, doing live content before the game. I can tell you right now, we're going to be watching Carson Beck because you guys are going to want to watch it. So we're going to be breaking that down next week. Um, offensive line and defensive line play. I talked about it last night. I, y'all y'all, y'all want to be dominant? Like <laughs> Coach talks about show me all the time. Like, hey, this offensive line talks about wanting to win a Joe Moore Award and, and pissed off kind of that they haven't won it the last two years. Show me. Show, show me Saturday against a, a UT Martin team that you should reset three yards down the line of scrimmage, right? You should reset snap after snap. Pockets should be umbrella clean. I'm talking about <laughs> perfecto, all right? If you're supposed to be who you think you are and who, you, who we think you are, Go out and show it against an inferior opponent. Same thing on the defensive side of the football. Control gaps. Um, control the line of scrimmage. Do not, do not let offensive linemen put hands on linebackers. That, like, I, it's, it's so misconstrued. It is great linebacker play at the University of Georgia. It is. They got great linebackers. They have success in the NFL. Glenn Schumann is a wizard. It is all of that. But it's also the fact that they stay clean. They never get touched. Down linemen never get their hands on linebackers at the University of Georgia. You know why? Because in years past, two of them had to worry about Jalen Carter. Two of them had to worry about Nazir Stackhouse. One of them had to worry about Nolan Smith. Another one of them had to worry about Michael Williams. Guess what? That's all five, right? Who are going to be the people on that down line that control the attention of the offensive lineman to keep them linebackers free? Because, again, that's the key, okay? People wonder why Alabama's defense has just slipped, uh, why, they can, why they're having tro- trouble stopping the run. It's because their linebackers are having stuff at their feet for the first time in decades, 
decades. So control the line of scrimmage. You want to be elite, show me your elite. Um, and then, you know, I want to see if I can identify some type of identity from our boy Mobo. Will Mobo give me something that I can take away and say, hey, this might be who they are. Last year, while leaving the first three games, I was like, <laughs> they're going to be a 12 attached team. They're, they're going to stay in 12 personnel. They're going to have an attached tight end. They're going to use, uh, you know, horizontal motion to stretch plays. But that's what they're going to be, a naked boot team off of that look too. You know, we knew that after the first three weeks. Okay, we really knew that after the first week. The first week, they stayed in 12 attached. Almost the first three drives, it looked like, um, and on into the football game. So, somehow Utah got the ball back already. Uh, anyways, great, uh, you know, a great opportunity to see if we got some type of offensive identity uh, this coming up week. Anything you think I, I'm going to be harping on next week on film? Mm-hmm. You guys have watched my product for years now. Gosh, I think I think one thing is going to be about going into Kirby's take about Brock Bowers. I think we are just going to start really diving into just how creative you can be with Brock Bowers, because I think they're in a sense going to have to be. But also because I think of the addition of Oscar Delp and him being a little more versatile, you can get even more creative with Brock Bowers and just the offensive weapons that surround him. Yeah, I, I honestly, I want to see what the cornerbacks do. Week one last mm. year, we noticed mm. something really different. Keely Ringo and Kamari Lasser were playing only one side of the field. It was Keely was on boundary side, wasn't he? No, it was, yeah, against Oregon they were. Yeah, so I, I want – there, I, That was a one-time thing. I don't think it will ever come back. Yeah, but, um, but to, to my point, I kind of want to see what they do with corners this year because Kamari's yeah. the guy – who are they going to start opposite of that? We, has that been released yet? Has Kirby even? No, but it, uh, breaking news here, it's going to be Julian Humphrey. Yeah. So, but I, I just want to see what the cornerbacks do. I think that's going to be the one thing that you'll be able to break down on film well, too. I got to stop sitting like this because this lab sits right here. Mm. Makes Discipline, you, man. Makes you look bored, too. No, it makes me look like I'm trying to hide my fat-ass double chin. Um, we have our mic'd up series this week. I want to release this now. Uh, last week we were at Mays and Douglas County in the hottest football game I've ever been a part of. Okay, uh, Rusty texts me in the middle of it. Rusty Mansell calls those games um, for GPB or the Peachtree TV. Peachtree TV. Anyway, yeah. he calls those games. He gets to sit in the box in the shade, probably with the fan. Him and the BA Brandon Adams, <clears throat> and of course me and, and and my guy Jeremy Johnson and my guy Jeff Santel. We're the real workers. You know what I mean? We're the real men. You know what I mean? We're, we're out there in the thick of it. In the thick of it. We're out there in it. You know what I mean? We're out there in that hundred and it felt like 106 degree like temps. That's what it felt like. I've been in 106 degree, uh, you know, what's that, what, what do they call that? Uh, the actual feels like, you know what I mean? That feels like temperature around 106. Rusty had the nerve to text us in the middle of the game and tell us that it was 145 on the turf. They had, what? Yeah, yeah. Excuse me? Yeah, 145 on the turf. They had some thermometer down, or thermostat down there for the TV broadcast. And, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we did a good enough job explaining that in the video of just how absolutely hot Dude, that's that insane. game was. Did anybody's, it was. It was beyond insane. It was miserable. Did anybody's cleats melt? I mean, 145 no, is insane. Quinta- Quintavious Johnson, the Georgia commit, and I laughed about this after the game. Um, he wore all black cleats. All black oh my and God. He, said, he said his feet, I mean, his feet were hot for like hours after the game. I wore, I wore uh, my low top 11s that were like, uh, they have black leathering on the toe of them. My, toe, my toes were blistering all game long. I had to like constantly move. It was gross. Um, anyways, but if you haven't watched that, you should watch that because we managed to produce really, really great content. I think I lost six pounds during the day. Um, it was nuts. I don't know how many of those big cut. Left. Uh, Yeah, getting that cut in. Anyways, so uh, we're going to go out to, I told you earlier, this game we chose this weekend, it's not a, I mean, there's one football player on the field that is going to, you know, probably or maybe end up at Georgia, right? If he doesn't end up at Georgia, he's going to end up somewhere in the powerhouse of college football, right? Um, But we're going to go see Westlake and and Cedar Grove play this week. Cedar Grove Mm. at Westlake, um, two of the better Metro Atlanta football programs that produce elite, elite professional football talent okay the one Georgia player or caliber player on the radar so far that we talked about it's two of them from Westlake it's a receiver that I'm drawing a name on or drawing a blank on his name and Juan Gaston Juan Gaston is a left tackle in the class of 2026 or no 2025 um Juan Gaston's six foot eight he's 340 pounds and uh he's been murdering people already this season so we're excited to see him 
tomorrow night, but I'm more excited for the environment. When I, when I go to Metro Atlanta cities, man, uh, you know, some of the small town environments in, in, in South Georgia and all that stuff, the whole town comes out, all that good stuff. It's a different vibe and a, a different kind of electricity when you go into an environment like Westlake or Cedar Grove at Westlake. Mm-hmm. Like, those are two state title contending programs year in and year out. Um, super excited to go watch that football game and bring that to you. Again, that's not going to be one we go in with any kind of preconceived notions. I just want a dollar bill football game. I want a four-quarter football game. I'm showing up. Y'all going to ball out. We're going to make great content. And the folks on YouTube going to love it and hit that thumbs up button. That's just the, the insto facto recipe Simple. for Friday Night's Mike. Watching Juan Gaston in itself is just you got That's right. I took you. I yeah. took you, didn't I? Uh-huh. To explain to the people how hard it is to identify the D1 players on Westlake's roster. It's not hard at all. <laughs> I see. I'm the other way around. I think it's impossibly oh, well, hard. For, okay, I remember There's having 40 this, of them. I remember having this conversation with you because um, you 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 told me like, oh, they got D1 wide receiver on there, and I was like, which one? I was yeah, like, I'm watching all, all of like these it. dudes warm up, and it's like any of these dudes could be them. Defensive line looks like freaking watching. It's, it's honest to God, it's like watching a D1 AA team warm up on a Saturday, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Westlake's got dudes top to bottom. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll, I'm super excited to bring that to you guys. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be taking a look at that uh, Cedar Grove-Westlake game this week and uh, going to have some fun. Uh, but let's give them three. Let's, uh, let's give them three right quick. We're going to give you guys – this one's inspired by our guy Dalton Lockridge on Twitter. Uh, he wanted to give them three in a sense of three unique talents was the way he worded it on Twitter today. I kind of tweaked it a little bit. Uh, we're going to name three gadget players, all right? These were three players that were used in a multitude of ways, all right? I'm going to go first here, and I think mine are uh, relatively, uh, at least the first two. The third one's going to throw you off from a loop, but it's kind of an Easter egg for uh, one listener. But, you know, it is what it is. I love doing that every once in a while. Uh, all right, number wait, one. Hmm? You know what you should do? What's up? Read it out and have us try to guess who it is. All right. Uh, here we go. Player X is the last player in Georgia football history to play both ways at the University of Georgia, or at least that's what the legend in my hometown has always been. Brandon Boykin? No. Last I'm talking two-way? about full-time two-way player. So Got done playing defense, ran his ass, played offense the whole game. Does he have a, a brother or a cousin? No, but he played for the University of Georgia in the 60s, so there's no way. There's okay. no way you yeah, that, that's a little, <laughs> And there's also a possibility this is a complete fabricated lie because I come from Douglas County, and uh, there is a legend in Douglas County. His name is Melvin Crook, and he's, he's, okay. he's re- not related to me, but he is a direct uh, – someone that means a lot to me and my family. Um, his grandson, Cody Crook, uh, wore 77 uh, at Landmark Christian, was the last person to wear 77 before I wore 77. And Melvin was known in the Douglas County parts for being the head coach at, at Lithia Springs High School for a number of years. Um, tremendous man, uh, tremendous influencer, played at the University of Georgia in the 60s. And the legend always was that Coach Crook was the last player to officially play both ways at the University of Georgia. Huh. Hmm. The more he was you know. a defensive tackle and an offensive tackle. Now, could be completely fabricated. You know what I mean? One yeah. of those like the fish was two pounds. And in reality, it, you know, the fish was eight pounds. In reality, it was two pounds. It could be mm-hmm. one of those things. Still a good fish. Um, still a good fish. But shouts out to the Crook family. Uh, Mr. Melvin actually passed several years ago. But, mm. um, you know, shouts out. Yeah, RIP for sure, man. Dude, the, the thickest, meatiest hands mm. I ever remember on a man. Like, would shake your hand. Uh, yeah. And it felt like the thing from uh, inc- uh, Fantastic Oh, Four. you're talking about like one of those people you shake their hands bro, and it hurts? Yeah. Bro, brick hands yeah, on the like, mans. God damn, bro. Brick Jeez. hands on the mans. So, yeah. Um, shouts out to Melvin Crook. All right, since we're already at three, we'll go, to, uh, we'll go up. Number two on the list, and this one's pretty easy. Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward's sophomore year, and everyone knows that he obviously played quarterback, played a little receiver, but this stat right here is absolutely bonkers. Heinz Ward's sophomore year, he had 872 yards passing. He had 248 yards rushing, and he had 249 yards receiving. He led the team in passing. He was second on the team in rushing, and he was third on the team in receiving. He was the team. Now, they were 6-6 and that year. They were not very good, but Heinz Ward. Heinz Ward, elite gadget player, elite, uh, unique uh, talent, if you will. Uh, And kind of a Hall of Fame, not Hall of Fame snub, but, man, like, maybe one day. He should be. I don't know. 
Yeah. I, the, the stats will never get him in, but the, the impact of, like, people my age, mm-hmm. like, I, I loved watching Heinz Ward play. Yeah, my mom was in college when he, he was there, and she's like, he was the only good player on the team. He's the only one he rem- – like, sh- he's the only one she even remembers seeing when she was in college. That's how bad Georgia was in the 90s. So, shout out Heinz Ward. That's, like, the first Georgia player as a kid I remember watching in the NFL yeah. because when they played in the Super Bowl mm. against the Arizona Cardinals with the Steelers, I just remember my dad being like, yeah, that guy went to Georgia – had a really long NFL career as well. He did. I don't know, like 12, 14 years. Yeah. Um, I think he finished in Seattle. It was like a weird yeah, injury. It was One of those things yeah, where yeah. he walks around. Finished dancing with the places. stars, you know. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. And now he's coaching college football, I think. Uh, last time XFL, I checked, he was at right? FA, FAU and then got a head coaching job at the XFL. Yeah. Nice. Or something For like, like that. the so, Houston something. Yeah. So, shout out Heinz Ward, number two on the list. Number one's easy. Uh, it's Champ Bailey. Champ Bailey's final year of college football, he was not only the best corner in all of college football, the dude had 828 yards of scrimmage, or yards from scrimmage. He was the best offensive player on Georgia's football team that year as well. It's a crying shame, a crying shame that in 1998, uh, Champ Bailey didn't get invited uh, to the Heisman ceremony. He finished seventh that year in the Heisman finalist voting. Uh, it was the year Ricky Williams won uh, the Heisman. Obviously, had 21 over 2,100 yards of rushing. But good Lord, Champ Bailey had a year, man. Three interceptions, okay, and had almost 900 yards of offense while also doing all of the kickoff and punt return mm-hmm. duties for the University of Georgia as well. Yeah. Insane. I think, I could be wrong with this, but I think his season in 1998 was statistically better than Charles Woodson's when he won the Heisman. So, yeah, just I, it sucks that he didn't get a shot at winning it because his team was, what, 9-3, and three, you said? Yeah, 9-3 and three so, that year. Mm. Yeah, now, not, I, I don't understand why he didn't at least get an invite. I, that's just yeah. – I, mean, I mean, it's voting, obviously, but, like, yeah. nowadays there's no way a football player like that doesn't oh. – I mean, if someone were to do that right – if Travis Hunter does that this year. He's they go trending nine and three, every week. He, bro, he's trending every week, and he's winning yeah, the Heisman. He's, he's damn sure winning the Heisman. Well, if they go three and – No, I'm saying if they do what Champ Bailey did. If uh, if they go nine and three – Oh, facts. It's yeah, over absolutely, with. Absolutely. If okay. he has 400 yards receiving, it's over okay, with. Okay, I'm, I'm yeah. thinking you're saying, like, even – sure. No. So those are my three. I uh, give them three. What do y'all got? I think I have the most unique player on everybody's list on my oh. t- on the top. Bryce Ramsey. Huh? <laughs> you name me any other quarterback in the world that can hand off a football better than Bryce Ramsey and then go boot it 45 yards <laughs> right after. That is the most unique football player I have ever seen in my life. That is Man's, a gadget player right there. Shouts out to Bryce Ramsey. Mans gives Bryce Ramsey. Gave his- a good highlight in a dark time. Mans gives Bryce Ramsey his first and only <laughs> compliment on a Georgia-related podcast or network, and then immediately says, "You name me or find me someone that could hand the ball off like Mans, bruh." What else <laughs> was he gonna say? He was five-yard slant. Bro, like. now that we're talking, about, I'm pretty sure Bryce Ramsey. Never mind. He came from up north, didn't he? I think he transferred so. from Virginia. He was no. Really, that's Grace pretty Lambert. highly recruited. Okay, that's Grace he's, Lambert. He's now, the one. This dude's from Camden. Right, Bryce Ramsey. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's he ran the, triple in high school. He's the one they took. It was that's the big controversy yeah. because it was Bryce Ramsey or Deshaun Watson, and they ended up recruiting Bryce Ramsey more than Deshaun Watson. Yeah. So, boy, that kind of decision will get you fired. Mm. Yeah. Well, it is what it Yikes. is. Yikes! All right, next one, Fred Gibson. If you look up any like receiving type record or like big time receiving stats, consistent player. Fred Gibson was that, and he was also pretty electric in the return game. Freddie G? Yeah, man. He is a G. Last one, you know, like I feel like you can't talk about this list of players without mentioning him, a more recent guy, Isaiah McKenzie. Mm. Like, electric in the return game. Joystick, like such a great nickname. Last Human joystick. Part for a touchdown at Georgia, correct? Uh, no, I think McCole did it in a, like a yeah, group of five game. Might okay. have it. Um, I think he did it on yeah. the punt. In the rounds, was Arkansas State. Got him in the run game, even though they got him involved at the wrong time against Vanderbilt in 2016 on th- fourth down, but we won't talk about that. Like just to, And then also probably has the greatest, one of the funniest reasons why he ended up committing to Georgia. Do you remember that story? No, I don't. Oh, man. So I believe he was either originally committed to Notre Dame or he was going to go to Notre Dame. And he's, they started telling him, like, all right, well, we have some campus rules around Notre Dame. And he oh, said, well, yeah. what are they? And he said, well, for one, you can't have sex on campus. And he's like, I'm out. He said, I ain't coming to Notre <laughs> Dame. And that's why he committed to Georgia. He said that in an interview, and I thought that was just hilarious. So those are my three. <laughs> what is Notre Dame, BYU? I don't <laughs> Yeah. I, I, no I, way. I mean, they got a big touchdown Jesus mural. I, Kath, 
Catholics be out here having sex. Bro, Catholics, <laughs> I'm into Catholics, it, yeah. I'm Catholic. You gotta go to confessional. Yeah, no, I, I'm Catholic, and we love drinking and having sex. That's all what I, I know thought. is the like, human all, joystick all wasn't do, having it. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Catholic, I thought Catholicism was based. Not to get too deep here, I thought Catholicism was like whole thing was confession. All you yeah. gotta do is go in there and say, "Hey, yeah, Father." Dude. Bro, I was with this bad chick last night. <laughs> Pretty much. And father's like, all right, say Had a couple of and everything's good. If it was yeah. really back in the day, you might actually like let out a little cash and then you're all good. Mm. <laughs> but that's classic case. Buy the I think it was called the buying of indulgences. Mm. There's there's your history review. My boy Martin Luther. What you got for us? So before we do this. This honorable mention, Brandon Boykin. I don't think yeah. anyone had him on the list. No, he, he, he was the one that created this kind of, uh, you yeah. know, list. Probably. But honestly, like, Brandon Boykin is, like, fourth or fifth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. He should be. If And we're going to name nine names, and he's, he's going to end up tenth. You know what I mean? Yeah. Bryce Ramsey. Got so a guy. All right, so that was a little bit of a joke. I mean, Bryce Ramsey. Come on, dude. Just because he got back there and punted <laughs> the football a couple times. He said unique players. That's unique. That's that as unique as he gets. Yeah, unique talents. He's got unique. Point. It's uniquely awful. So the first guy I have is actually a really well-known guy, but I don't think people really appreciate him as a gadget player. Todd Gurley really did it all when he was at Georgia. Mm. He returned kicks. He was a demon out of the passing game out of the backfield, and obviously one of the greatest running backs UGA's had. That's that's a trifecta. I do remember a handful of lefty passes. Yeah, he was, yeah. he also threw about. He had like the longest pass, and um, like he I can't remember what the stat was, but like his um pass to Jed Blazevich, I believe it was. It was like the longest pass in like eight years. Bro, or something you like tell that. me, Jed Blazevich got behind the defense and took <laughs> one for a long. Yeah. Like when Todd when Todd Gurley's running up the middle, yeah, he's yeah, getting behind the that's defense. True. Ain't nobody running, nobody covering Jim Blaze. that's crazy. Todd Gurley's first touch was a touchdown on a kickoff return, right? His like first this. kickoff return was, I was actually at that game. It was against Buffalo yeah. in 2012. That was when Khalil Mack was there, I believe. It was, yeah. So then the next guy. Look at you guys, man. <laughs> Dude, we've been, we've been at we this for a it, while. We on it, bro. We've been at this for a while. Next guy I have, this one's kind of just a shout out. He's not as much a, but we got to do it. Kirby Smart. Kirby, oh my God. Kirby Smart returned two what punts. What a kiss in ass this guy is. Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I'll skip him then. I'll no, skip. go ahead. Explain, Kirby to Smart. Me. Explain to me why Kirby Smart makes this list. So, Kirby Smart returned two punts in his time at Georgia. Dose. And he was the holder for PATs. Mm. He actually muffed the snap. There's a, there's a story he goes on this. He muffed the snap one time, and, you know, the basic fire. Fire! Drink. Yep. And I think the way he retells it is that they didn't convert the two-point conversion, so... Shout out Kirby Smart for being, you know, gadget player on that. So shout out to Kirby Smart for fair catching two punts no, and, he returned uh, he returned and failing to hold a kick correctly. Yeah. Shouts out. That's gadgety, bro. Was he number one on your gadgets list? No, number. Okay. Do you want to hear number one on Let's my gadgets list? One. This is the most slept on. This is. I was about to say, didn't you say you were going to have the name? Yeah, I have oh, the dude, gadget yeah. player of all gadget players. He is the only person in the Hall of Fame to have a thousand receiving yards, a thousand passing yards, and a thousand rushing yards. It's like a John Smoltz of football. Yeah, Charlie Trippy. Oh wow! Charlie yeah, Trippy sure was. I, I was reading up on the AP report after he passed. Yeah. R.I.P. Listen to this. Just this paragraph alone. As a sophomore in 1942, he starred on the Georgia-led team led by Heisman Trophy winner Frank Sinkwich. in a 75 to nothing route of rival Florida. Trippy ran for two touchdowns, threw another, and scored a fourth on an interception return. Bruh. He also, like, returned punts, so he was doing it all for Georgia. God, Bro, man. they dubbed up the Gators 75 to nothing. Yeah. <laughs> 75 to nothing, and he had a pick six, two rushing touchdowns, and threw one. I'll tell you right now, even if they were that much better than Florida, which they're not, they're, like, 20 points better than Florida, Kirby would never do that to somebody. No. I mean. He would never. Uh, that's insane. That's got to be the best and margin of victory. You said that he played in the MLB and in the NFL at the same time. Yeah. So I mean, this guy did it all. I, Bro, Charlie I'm Trippy. Sure, wasn't he in the war too? Yeah. yeah I was about to say, any he's, he's in the military. Man's, man's was. That's like goaded humans of all time. Yeah. Charlie, man's was out here dubbing up Florida seventy-five to nothing, getting dubs in World War Two. People up the talk Nazis, about Bo Jackson. Dubbing How about we Nazis? talk about Charlie Trippy? I'm saying though. Yeah, Jeez, I, after Lord. reading that article, because there's more, but after reading that article, I might have to say Charlie Chippy might be one of the UGA goats. And I slept on him before. I mean, hey, I mean, he would be on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, yeah. Like, to, just in one game. For the first head, for sure. He is George Washington of Georgia football. Yeah, for sure. Facts. Well, Frank Sinkwich might be because he won that's, the Heisman. That's but, true. But, man, Charlie Trippy. Charlie Tri <sighs> Charlie Trippy's my guy. That's goat. a dope name, too. There we go. Like a football and player. he lived to 100. That's crazy. Tony. Yeah, like Kirby Might Smart be one is one of the greatest birthday. humans ever. He's up there. 
Yeah. I mean, honestly, like goat humans. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many people have done <laughs> what my man's has done. Yeah. There can't be many. No. Nah. So yeah, those are my three. You guys know what? Let's, let's not. We're not even gonna give Kirby the three. We're gonna give Trippy the three. Give Facts. him three. Uh, let's talk about this little life dilemma you got going on. I'm I'm here for. It. I need help. <laughs> yeah, you do. The fact that this is based, called a life dilemma. I mean, bro, based off some of his suggestions, he needs this. Yeah, he does. Because he's about to kill himself. No, he's not kill himself, but have a real bad night. <laughs> well, um, he already dropped his dinner on the floor today. Yeah. On this floor? No, no, no chill. I was about to say, bro. First thing he said show. when he got in the truck is that, well, I dropped my dinner on the floor. Just nothing but bland chicken right yeah. on the floor. Just, it's what it was. <laughs> I know it was. <laughs> it was rotisserie. I, I was I mad. profile. I know what it is. <laughs> anyway, so our boy Kirby's got a party tonight. Um, all legal age drinking going on, by the way. Um, our man's got one of them anything buts parties going on. And the anything but is a cup. <laughs> You gotta, right. cup, <laughs> you gotta say anything but a cup. You gotta say anything but a cup when you say that. No, they're anything buts parties. That's yeah. what they are. Anything buts. Anything but anything but a cup. All right. Tonight, anything but a cup. That is the category we are playing. Um, and I have one dead giveaway, stone cold lock of the century. This is the only answer for a party that does not allow you to bring a cup for your beverage. I don't care whether you're drinking shots, whether you're drinking beer, whatever you're drinking, liquor, mixed drinks, whatever. Take a vase. If you take a vase, dude, you're good. I like it. You know what I mean? Just, I like it. And, and it don't have to be a big vase. It could be, you know, go to Publix or go to uh, Walmart on your way back home. Uh, go into Walmart, grab like a $12 uh, set of roses. Maybe you go in, hand, hand roses to some pretty ladies, and then you can drink out your vase. Yeah. Mm. So that's my number one option All for right, sure. I, I like that one. Jay, well, what do you got for I me? I said the mouthwash bottle, but that idea just sparked another. What if you went to Walmart and bought a gas can, like one of those small gas cans, Ooh. and you just drank Ooh. out of the nozzle? And it's brand new, so it yeah, taste yeah, yeah. like gas. Definitely brand new. Jay, well, don't we might be, be going and rinsing out an old one and putting. <laughs> yeah, we might be do stopping by Walmart on the way home. Jay, well, I like oh, that one. Can you do that after you drop me off? All right, yeah. <laughs> I don't want to go to Walmart right, with you at fine. night. Fine. Thanks. Fine, fine. But yeah, if you're if anyone in the chat has an idea too, comment that because I already had to go I'm, to Barbaritos with him. I don't want to go to Walmart. What did you? Uh, what were your original plans here? So my original one was I was gonna get an empty stick of deodorant and like clean it out really good and use that. You're dumb. Foul. Ass. That is foul. That is foul. That's was, a great way to. Describe I was also it. thinking foul. about like hollowing out a fruit, like make an apple, make that a cup. An apple? Yeah, dude. You were thinking of items that hold no substance whatsoever. Do you know how many times you're going to have to refill that? Like, you're just inconveniencing yourself. Some They're, people will think, why in the hell are they talking about Because this right here. I do not want to lose a co-host because man's over here drinking out of yeah. an apple. Or, <laughs> uh, I could always just do shoeies. <sighs> yeah, I, I, that was my last one, a shoe. Yeah. Yeah, a clean shoe. Because um, there's going to be some idiot out there just yeah. hammering shoe beers because mm -hmm. he thinks it's cool. Yeah. And it's like, it's not. But yeah, you're drinking no, your foot. Not. You're drinking your foot, bro. It's not. <laughs> you're drinking your foot, bro. You're drinking your foot, bro. Uh, I think the vase is the easy option. There. Yeah, that's the easiest one. I like it. Bro, like you it. had some wild suggestions. Yeah. A, a deodorant stick? Really? I know you're a liquor guy and you only take shots, but that's crazy. Um, anyways. The chat didn't really help us out there. I don't expect them to in a subject matter such as that. Um, but anyways, I, I think the vase is the easy option. Go with it. Let's do a little something called Sunday's headlines today. All right, this one's nice and simple, okay? All we're doing is trying to predict what you guys in the media, <laughs> you guys in the media, flask is not a cup, Michael B says. I think that's a cop out. Yeah. A little bit. I, wanna, thing, I, I think, I think you're going to get some looks. Yeah. I think you're going to get some looks. I'll probably get made fun of. That's like showing up to At least to you a, gave a suggestion. We appreciate yeah, that. No yeah, no doubt. Thank you, I Michael. appreciate the suggestion, but that's no different than like showing up to a formal event in a tuxedo t-shirt. Yeah. I can't do that. Because yeah. I'm business, yeah. but I'm here to party. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Nah, here we go. We got a, a fireman's boot. Got it's those not, laying around? It's not a bad suggestion. I'm happy with rain rain boot? Yeah, that's not bad. I like it. That's not bad. Rain boot's definitely cleaner than like a tennis shoe. Like that's better because it actually holds a rain liquid. boot for sure. It'll actually yeah. hold it and everything. Not bad. Not a bad suggestion from Chris Daniel there in the chat. I like that. Um, all right, let's do Sunday's headlines today. Okay, here's the deal. Uh, Saturday's game against UT Martin. It is what it is. You guys are going to watch it. Uh, you are going to have fun. If you're at the game, you're going to sweat uh, in the sun until the sun goes down, and then you'll probably be leaving by halftime if all things go according to plan. So, what will we be talking about? What will we be talking about on Sunday when you guys wake up and start your uh, Sunday morning reading? Okay, what will be the headlines? I got one for you. Straight lace, no draw. Quote, 
Mobo completes it, or complete or shows a completely new identity. That'll be Sunday's headline, right? This team won't get, uh, you know get very predictable on third and long. I think that's from what we've uh, established on this network. The reason Georgia fans have some disdain, if they do, for Mike Bobo is his redundancy on third down during his last regime or last time spent uh, at the University of Georgia. And I'm here to tell you, I don't see them being in a lot of third and longs anytime soon. Okay, so I don't know if you're going to see any redundancy. I don't know if you're going to see any halfback draws on third and 18 because, well, I don't expect them to be in third and 18. So I think you're going to get a lot of, man, this offense didn't miss a beat. Man, this offense looks great when they put up 55 points uh, Saturday against UT Martin. Now, I also think you're going to get some type of reason that Kirby Smart is not happy. Kirby Smart will be bitching about something on Saturday, and I bet it's the second half finish. Okay, that's what I'm going to say. Kirby not happy with second half finish. Again, he's going to find something to be upset about because there's no way that he's going to leave the first game of the uh, uh, season with another snoozer inbound next week before they start SEC play with his football team thinking everything's happy-go-lucky and everything's all good because that's just not the way he operates and he'll never operate that way. Uh, And I also guarantee you every single outlet, including ours, will have some type of freshman report coming up on Sunday. Okay, we'll tell you what freshmen played. We'll tell you how they played. We'll tell you who impressed. We'll do all that good stuff. I've already told you here on the network tonight that I think Roger Robinson rushes, rushes for 100 yards in his college debut. That's a bold statement, okay? And I think it's going to happen on Saturday or has an opportunity to happen. Boys, those are my Sunday's headlines. First thoughts on any of those um, before we get into y'all's. I like the Bobo one. I had, yeah, I had I a Bobo have. headline on there as well. I think with It's going to be a talking point Yeah, all absolutely. Year. It's going to be something like Bobo proves you is the perfect hire or something like that. Like that's what people are going to want to talk about because that's the biggest, really the biggest question going into the season. Yeah. Um, I had one. I think, I think there's going to be something about, I'll, this is what I would call it. Three Pete, you can call it a streak because George is going to come out. They're going to yes. look real nice. They're going to look poised to make it to go um, and win their third straight national title. And so I think that's one thing that people are going to talk about. And I think there's also going to be something said about how Georgia just continues to reload talent despite draft picks, despite the amount of talent that leaves to go to the next level every single year. I mean, this is a perfect game to see it, too, because you're going to see a lot of freshmen. You're going to see a lot of depth guys, and they're just going to be able to show out and really show their skill sets. Our guy, Marion Campbell, said empty a catch-up bottle. Oh. You're a shots guy, so you can squeeze them in, I in like shots. That. I like that. I have water guns upstairs. Just thoughts, that, that, just ideas. I might have to take a water gun. Just it. ideas. What's so for my headlines, obviously I think we all said Mike Bobo is going to do something along the lines of Mike Bobo showing really good in the offense. I think week one games like this are perfect for overreactions for people to, in the media to go, oh my God, is this, this you know. I think they're going to do that with Carson Beck. Carson Beck's going to have a great game and people are going to really say, you know, is Carson Beck the next Heisman winner for, the first Heisman winner in a long time for Georgia. So I think that's going to be one of the overreactions. One I don't hope to see is anything injury related mm. because you are kind of thin in some spots. You don't really need to get an injury. And in games like this, I think the number one objective is to stay healthy. So hopefully no injury reports on Sunday. Stay healthy and uh, show a, a sense of continuity and consistency. Mm-hmm. Uh, go out and practice or play like you practiced. It sounds like he's been relatively happy with the way that they've practiced this camp. Um, And I know that because it's been really quiet. It's been really boring. It's been a very boring camp. You know, they kind of knew going in what was going to happen at quarterback. We all kind of knew. The only thing they were were waiting on is the cornerback spot. And it took till about this week before sources that I talked to were finally, you know, adamant that they had kind of found a guy but still haven't found a guy. They still don't know. Like, Julian Humphrey's probably going to get the start on Saturday. But he's got to play well. He's got to he's got to make plays and particularly tackle well. Okay, um, that's what they're waiting to see before they just like pencil him or pin him in. Right now he's penciled in for sure. So here's my question: Would you say that George is doing with their quarterbacks what Bama's doing with their quarterbacks, where it's kind of this first game is going to be the ultimate scrimmage to see who really is the guy who plays in that game situation? Because I think that's what Bama's yeah. doing right now. I think they're doing that at at corner, and I think they're going to do that with just their defensive identity in general uh, throughout the season. I I don't think they're going to know what their defensive back rotation should be and will be until like week four, week five. It's going to look great. You're not going to notice. There's going to be no differences to the naked eye. The performance will look identical. 
but how, you know, are they going to be a zone match football team? Are they going to be a strictly cover two man under football team? Are they going to be a split zone safety football team? Are they going to let Malachi Starks run the alley or, uh, you know, play center field and let Bullard run the alley? What, what are they going to do from an identity standpoint? I don't think they'll really figure that out until about, I don't know, week four, week five. And you got time to do it. And so. even, you do, you do have time to do it. But I, I think even now as I talk that all out, it's like, Kirby would listen to that and he'd go, well, we're going to be multiple de- and, and we're going to change week to week depending on the opponent anyway. So this guy doesn't know what the hell he's talking about, which is probably true. You know what I mean? Yeah, the, we to know. an extent. Yeah, we know. This guy doesn't know shit. Um, but, yeah, no, I think you're going to see a variety of different looks from this defense all year long, and, and we'll get a first look at that this weekend for sure. Mm, yeah, a lot of anticipation. I mean, it's, I, th- I feel like this is just kind of a good – I feel like this is perfect for week one just because you'll get a really good feel of this team – kind of a lot of change going on like you said so I feel like UT Martin being week one while it may not have the anticipation that Clemson or Oregon did and it may not have the hype I feel like for Georgia fans and Georgia's program you couldn't be in a better situation really going into week one you could be playing a big opponent that you can handle that'd be cool it would be cool that'd be cool we wouldn't be we wouldn't be sitting here on a on a Thursday evening with 38 people in our live chat no if it was Oklahoma we wouldn't be mad yeah no we would not hey shouts out to you folks by the way hit that thumbs up button I love you so I that that made me think of a question. Who would you say would be the ideal week one opponent for Georgia this year? Like the perfect test, mm. biggest name, but it's also a team that you should beat no matter what. You know, one that Wisconsin. was Wisconsin. Okay, Wisconsin. Okay, Wisconsin. You know, it was, it was weird. A couple of years ago, they played Vanderbilt week one. Mm-hmm. I think it was twenty nineteen. They yeah, played twenty nineteen. They won that game, which typically you don't get like an SEC matchup no, week one. So I thought that was interesting. I mean, nah, he, I would like that matchup, Georgia versus Wisconsin. That would be a fun one. That's a Give fun me one. some Luke Fickle again. Mm. I think Georgia Fickle. versus I think Georgia versus Utah would be a good one. Yeah, because yeah. Utah is essentially just what's that score? It's seven three right now, and Florida's driving. Okay, so I think we're ba- we're yeah. we're gonna settle back into a, a slobber knocker of a football yeah, game. John Rice Plumley just threw a his and, third touchdown. So. Yeah, you're done. You're cooked. <laughs> yeah, R.I.P. R.I.P. To the prize picks. Um, all right, let's talk about final predictions before we get out of here and start talking NBR. We got a good loaded NBR show for you guys tonight. For those of you who showed up and showed out tonight, y'all got some good stuff coming your way. Um, let's do final predictions. Georgia is off the books anywhere. Gambling fiend, did you find anywhere to, to put money on this? So team? there's a bunch of places that have lines per se, but no sports book like DraftKings, Bet MGM, none of those actually. Nowhere happen. you can put money. Yeah, on. there's nowhere you can bet. The line right now is looking at like 44 and a half, 45, depending on where you are. But Ooh. that's you can't bet on that. So that yeah. shows how confident the books are in that. Yeah, like Odd Shark put out a um, score prediction, and it was like 42 to 20. What? Yeah, I thought that was really weird. 42 to 20, like really. I Odd Shark know. systems do those. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not like that's just sim- those are just simulations. Yeah, but they're very rarely. Yeah. Correct. Um, but, yeah, no, that's wild. That, that's just their metrics telling you what that is. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, no, I think these games all go relatively the same way, um, depending on whether or not – have you ever noticed if he's got, like, a really, really, like, in-depth past with the football coach, it's never a big blowout? Yeah. Like, when they play Sanford, that's going to be a 30-point win. He's yep. going to be nice and protective because – that coach on that other sideline means a lot to him. Mm-hmm. Whole lot um, of respect. Whole lot, lot of respect. respect. Lot of respect. A lot of respect. Ton of respect for that guy on the other sideline. I've been in them headphones, all that good stuff. Um, I understand how that feels. No, you don't. That dude ain't been <laughs> dubbed up by 50 a moment in his life. I don't I, know what he talking about. I think if you had AI watch every press conference of Curry Star, it could exactly replicate what he would say after Facts. a game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. A lot of respect. Thought we played well. Disappointed in this. We gotta to get go check better. The film. Gotta go check uh, the film next week. So it's all. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> you know, got to be balanced in this league. Complimentary. A lot football. of in this league talk. This is a really tough league, guys. Yeah, no. Nah, um, that's a good football team. You know <laughs> what I mean? That kind of stuff. Uh, but no, nah, I, I think this is one of those football games where there's not a, a ton of history. Uh, what you got? Graham Mertz just got smacked. Um, there's not a ton of history uh, between these two coaches, I don't believe. There's some history between Trey Scott mm-hmm. and this head coach, um, but not a ton, right? So 
there's going to be a, uh, hey, we, we got to get loose, man. We got to get our offense ready. We got to get our quarterback comfortable. We got to get some confidence and some, and some good things on tape. We gotta, we, we've been hitting each other all freaking summer. We're ready to let these guys loose. Carson Beck ain't started a football game since 2019. 55 to 10. 55 to 10. Garbage touchdown wow. late. UT Martin. 55 to 10, Georgia dubs up big time, covers that's, whatever mythical spread there is. That's, that's almost my prediction. exactly what I said. I said 52 to 10. Yeah. Or 52 to 13, excuse me. I think they get two field goals, and then you have your late fourth quarter when the threes are in touchdown. But other than that, pretty much exactly what you said. I think Carson Beck comes out. They go five for five. You, that's a quick 35 right there. And then the twos come in and rush the shit out of the ball. I'm right behind you guys on both scores. So I got UGA 45-7. to seven. I think Ooh. it is going to be a garbage touchdown. You know, you get the third unit in there on defense. Maybe something happens late. UT Martin has a big play or something like that. But, yeah, just a whole lot of Georgia offense figuring things out, really starting to get clicking in so they can get those – get everything greased and lubricated before the SEC schedule comes up. You know out. who I feel really, really bad for? Who? And I, I, I know this feeling because I was this guy. But there's some defensive tackle – for UT Martin, that's going to get just – he's going to get beat to shreds by Cedric Van Pran, Xavier Trust, and Tate Ratledge. I mean, he's just going to get shit caved in for like two quarters. And then they're going to go off the field. And these two guys named Dylan Fairchild and Michael Morris are going to run back onto the field. <laughs> and that poor defensive tackle is going to be like, what the fuck is going on, man? <laughs> like, I thought I was getting a break. Dude, I played against Valdosta State my junior year of college. Yikes. And we were down 48 to nothing. 48 to nothing. And they brought in their third string defensive tackle who had just transferred in from West Virginia. He was six foot four, 340 pounds, and the some bitch was fresh. I mean, mm. fresh as could be. Hadn't played a snap. Had not all year. Not at West Virginia. Not at Valdosta State. Just ready to get after Just it. ready to eat my shit. I mean, just, it's so, it's so disheartening. You yeah. finally think you're fitting to get some, some relief. Uh, and here comes Micah Morrison doing fair child. I'm, I'm kind of interested in that. What's the mentality going into a game like that where you know for a fact okay, so I can, you I can are the sacrificial land? I can speak to I can speak well. to this a lot. Um, so for those who don't know, I was a, we, we were losers in college. That's what we did. We were the... We were the Vandy on the schedule. That's exactly what we were in the Gulf South Conference. And everybody knew it, okay? And we knew it. Um, it's part of the reason why we were that way. But it becomes a point where you're no longer a team. You're more worried about individual uh, play. Okay, so it got to a point in my career where I would just, I would encourage those around me, make sure that they're trying to do their best so they could help me do my best. But, I mean, when you go three and out, 12 times in a row, all you can worry about is the 36 snaps you took. I, I, can't, I can't worry about – because it's such a 111th football, a sport. You know, do your 111th, mm -hmm. do your job. I can do my job to the utmost ability, right? I, there were times where I would get honorable mentioned uh, Gulf South Conference players type deal, right? For a 2-9 a, 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 a and nine football team in a, a conference that produces NFL football players. So you just kind of got to do your job. And, and when it, that, that idea of 111th, if you're winning your 111th and nine guys on the, uh, next to you are losing, like, you're not going to have a successful play. Right. So, yeah, the, the mindset when you become, like, redundantly a loser is very much so inward. It's very much so focused on, like, hey, what, what can I do today to play good? As a UT Martin football player, there's one thing in your mind. Survive. No. How can I get a clip against this dude that's going to be in the mm, NFL? Yeah. That is it. How can I make sure I dub up Mary Smith? How can I get a speed rush on this dude? How can I make sure that when Ra Ra Thomas comes onto the field or when Noad McConkey's out there, I'm locked up, I'm strapped up? How do I make sure those things are happening? That's the only thing that would be in my mind if I was a UT Martin football player this weekend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is interesting because even in high school, we had games where, like, going to play Harrison or Dalton, you had that feeling, like, you know, we could win this, but when you're playing the best team in the country, there's no hope for right. you. So it's, I wonder what that vibe would be in the locker room. Because I've never been there It's before. quiet. Yeah. There's not a lot of talking. Um, <laughs> Jesus, dude. That's just sad. A lot of, lot of uh, headphones in, not music in the locker room. Mm -hmm. Winning programs play, like, 
music together. Mm -hmm. They vibe together. They pregame the game together. Losing programs sit in their fucking locker and stare at the ground and wonder when the 60 minutes are going to be up. That's it, bro. Yeah. That's all you got. And it's, it's a long time. It's, it's, it's part of the reason why when I got done with football, I didn't really want much to do with football for quite a while um, and kind of walked away from it. Hey, don't walk away from this network. We've got another hour of programming coming up right up. We're going to talk to our guy, J.D. Piquel from On3, uh, friend of the network, uh, uh, a viewer of the network as well. So uh, glad to have him on with something we've been working together, trying to get together for a while. Um, and this is just going to be normal programming for us. That's not going to be no goofy interview. That's going to be two dudes talking ball. Appreciate you for being here. Love you. Let them know that the stream is not scheduled yet. Stream is not scheduled yet. We'll have it live. So just keep the channel on.